Okay, uh, we are now also joined by Kathy Russin, our executive trial producer who is in Missouri, in Springfield, and she has been inside the courtroom for every single moment. I think you haven't missed a moment of this trial. We're expecting closings in about an hour. Kathy, any word on, you know, what exactly we could expect from each side? Well, the prosecutors need to be able to prove that he had the ability to deliberate on this and, and to make it be premeditated, that he had numerous chances to stop this. Um, I believe they have proven that throughout this trial. He had more than enough time. He had, you know, even, that's not even talk about before he was heading there, because before there were days of this and weeks of this talking with Gypsy about it. But even the long bus ride from Wisconsin to there, he had that chance. The prosecutor even brought up that standing outside Dee Dee's bedroom door, he himself said he paused for a minute and wasn't sure if he could actually do it. So there's another. He, he's definitely by the law guilty of first degree murder. I think most people are agreeing to that because legally he showed that he could have changed his mind. What the defense has to do is convince that jury that he didn't have the capability to really premeditate all this and they want the jury to find him guilty of a lesser charge. The problem with that, in my opinion, is they put up their medical expert to talk about he's an autistic person. Uh, that medical expert never once in their entire testimony, if the question wasn't asked, and I'm sure I know why, um, did he have the ability to premeditate this, to deliberate on this? That question was never asked, and I'm sure the answer would have been yes. His IQ isn't that low. So what you're saying basically is the defense's expert witness, and we just heard from that expert witness before the on the other side of the break, um, really did not do much to help the defense's case in terms of really trying to bring this down from a premeditated murder. No, not at all. And there was a stark difference between the defense ex psychologist and the prosecution psychologist. Prosecution, that guy had credentials, 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 published in many papers. He was charismatic, by the way. A couple of women jurors would giggle at things that he said. He was very likable, but he was very knowledgeable. Um, the other doctor was also knowledgeable, but not really not as much. And the prosecution's doctor was able to say, look, he, I tested him at a 77 IQ, which is even lower. The defense tested him at 82. And he said neither one of those are um, a disability. Neither one of those would make it so he couldn't have premeditated this. And the defense really didn't, could, didn't come with anything else on that. Uh, We've been there talking, just the other media, while we've been sitting around waiting for closing to start. And the only way he's not going to get first degree murder, in my opinion, is if there's going to be one, two, however many jurors that don't want an autistic person put in prison for the rest of his life. And that's not the law. But that would be, in my opinion, the only way he gets a lesser charge. So if, if, they, if they more make a decision based on how they feel and, and the justice in putting someone behind bars for the rest of and their life. And we know juries do that sometimes. You know, juries do that sometimes. Absolutely. Well, it's certainly going to be very, very interesting to see what happens. We're going to be streaming those closings live here on the Law and Crime Network. Kathy has to get back to work there in Missouri, but please keep us updated on what's happening. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back on the other side. Stay with us. It's so exciting that we have our very own Kathy Russon in the courtroom. She's been following this. She's been tweeting out. Now, Kathy, I have a bunch of questions for you, but I want to know what's been the mood in the courtroom so far, especially during the closings? Well, there's not really a mood or it, it's pretty much always been the same. The gallery did have a few more people in it today than they have all week. It's never been packed. It's a very small courtroom. Um, and the jurors were just very attentive throughout the closings. Do you think the jurors through the entirety of this trial have been more receptive to either the prosecution or defense? If you can tell, sometimes you just have no clue what's running through their minds. Yeah, I really never noticed anything until the, um, when Gypsy was on the stand, uh, at least one female juror never really looked at her. I don't know if that means anything. But when the prosecution's um, expert witness was on, the psychologist, 
he, Dr. Denny, um, he had a couple of those women on the jury really, really had attention. They would even g giggle at little things he said. I will say, though, that the alternates were just excused, and there were three women, and that was one of the women. Oh, very interesting. And so the alternates were excused. So in some jurisdictions, the lawyers are able to talk to the alternates. Do you know if that was that happened in this case? No, I don't believe so. They were immediately out of the building. Okay. So let's get to the closings. We all just heard both the prosecution and defense closings. I want to get your thoughts on which one that you thought was stronger. I think a lot of people, a lot of viewers are leaning towards the prosecution's closing. It was very clean cut, but I would love to hear your thoughts. No, that's true. So the prosecution has to prove um, that he was able to deliberate this, that it was premeditated, and that he had time to think about it. He, they used the word deliberate over and over and over again because that's what they have to prove. And by, in order to do that, they went through everything that he had planned up until that day. Um, speaking about it on text messages with another girl a year prior to one of his friends um, even right up to the bus ride he had the whole bus ride over he had time in the hotel to think about it he even himself said he stood outside Dee Dee's bedroom for one minute deciding what he should do so all of that leads to the deliberate part that they need to prove first degree murder is there any way that the jurors are going to find Mr. Godijan not guilty on first degree murder I think the only possibility of that happening is if there are jurors on that jury that does not want to send an autistic man to prison for the rest of his life. And so whether or not it meets the criteria of first degree, there could be some that hold out not wanting to give him that. Other than that, I don't, there's no reason legally because he qualifies for first degree murder. So it's, it's a Friday night right now, and the jurors are going to begin to deliberate. It's m very likely that they're going to go in to Monday. But do you think it's going to be a, a quick verdict, given what we've seen so far? I don't think it'll be a quick verdict. I'll be shocked if it is a quick verdict. There's a lot to think about in this case. They haven't been able to talk about it yet. I think they're going to take their time deliberating. Um, on the defense closing argument, you know, his whole argument surrounded around Gypsy. And this was Gypsy's plan. He said the word Gypsy over and over again, and he also said Gypsy manipulated. Go to John, and he also said that multiple times. You know, that's really what they have in this defense, is that it wasn't his idea and that he was manipulated. Thank you so much, Kathy. I have been glued to your Twitter. They have been, it's been so helpful. I almost feel like I'm there in the courtroom with you. So thank you so much. We're gonna pop back in to the prosecutor's closing arguments.